anyone who doesn't know Claude, Claude is a dog. As the book starts, it starts, Claude is a dog, Claude is a small dog, Claude is a small plump dog, Claude is a small plump dog who wears a fancy red beret and a stylish red sweater. So he's quite an unusual dog in many respects. Um, and the idea came from, actually, I, I moved house shortly after my granddad died. Um, and I was having to adjust to kind of working not with him around anymore. Um, and I, I, subconsciously, I think I was, I was thinking, what would have made him laugh? I wanted to do something, I wanted to do a book that was for slightly older children, but I didn't really know where to start. I'd written some things before, I'd sort of challenged myself to write stories, which I thought were quite commercial. It was about um, a girl who, who became friends with a mermaid. And though editors liked it, they didn't, they didn't jump on it. it. It was a bit formulaic, I think. Um, and so I was sort of thinking what I could write, and one night I couldn't sleep, um, and it was really hot, so I, I, I sat up in bed and I drew, um, I drew a dog uh, sitting, sitting at a table drinking a cup of tea. And it was initially, it was actually for uh, my kitchen wall. I don't have any of my artwork up at my, my house, but this wall was annoying me and it needed something on it. So I decided to, uh, to draw something that I could frame and put on there. But it was almost as if Claude had been waiting there all along. Um, waiting for me to draw him, because as soon as I drew him, I had all these ideas for these stories, and I knew what world he lived in. And actually, I think, in a way, he's very heavily based on my granddad, because he was a, quite a clever, well, he was a very clever man, and he got himself into the most ridiculous situations. Um, so one of my favorite stories was when my great-grandmother was ill, and she was living with my grandparents. My grandmother, who was very, very stylish, and, um, and, and, and you know, sort of liked everything just so, had left my granddad painting the four stairs and landing. Now, he wasn't the most, uh, he wasn't particularly good at that type of thing. Anyway, the carpets were up and he was painting. He just finished and he stepped, stood back at the top of the stairs to see what he'd done and knocked the entire pot of paint down the stairs. <laughs> so my great-grandmother came out of bed and she was saying, Alice is gonna kill you. Um, so he said, don't worry, don't worry, I can do it, I can clear it up. So he cleaned it all up and it was immaculate, perfect. My, grand my grandma came in, opened the under the stairs door, put her coat in there, and all the paint had come through, and she had a fur coat in there as well. Um, so he didn't get away with it, but it was always that type of thing. Um, so he got stopped by the police on the way over to Birmingham. He didn't know what he'd done, it's because he'd left his briefcase on top of the, the car. So he managed to get all the way from Coventry, which is where I'm from, to Birmingham with this thing on top of the car. But, so, so it's all those little things. I decided to, maybe this could be something. Um, but mixed in with that, I'm kind of influenced with a lot of things. I love listening to other illustrators talk. Um, uh, and I am influenced by a lot of them, but I think I'm more influenced by film and TV. I did watch a lot of TV and a lot of films when I was younger, um, but not necessarily the type of films that you know, five, six, seven-year-old would watch. And that was mainly down to my grandparents as well. My granddad loved comedy and sort of silly slapstick things. So I sort of grew up on Hello, Hello and... Um, Carry on films and more common wise. So it all kind of mashed together, and I decided that I wanted this book to work a little bit like a TV show. So you, I think you were saying earlier, Adam, about like a, a static cartoon. That's what I wanted. Because um, I always imagine, in every, any book I do, I always imagine it as the, the page is a stage, and, and, that, and that's, how you, that's how you communicate to the, to the reader. Um, so I thought it could work, you know, by having a character that, that talks directly to the reader. Apparently, I learned afterwards that that is a bit of a no-no in publishing, but it seems to work for Claude. And um, so this is how he, he looked when I first sent a pitch into my uh, to my agent, and then on to Hardware. And this is how he looks now. So he's been refined a little bit. I should tell you that his best friend is a sock um, called Sir Bobbly Sock, <laughs> who is a mixture of my grandmother uh, and. Um, <laughs> Larry Grayson, I don't know if you know Larry Grayson. <laughs> um, I, I grew up kind of watching him as well. So quite often I'd come home from school and my grandmother, if it was a hot day, would have the French windows open and she'd be lying down in her apron um, but with cucumber slices on her eyes. And that is Sir Bobby Sock's favourite thing to do. So he's quite delicate. And um, I don't really know where the idea of the sock came from. Like I said, it just sort of pinged into my, my mind. Um, but I think, by analysing, I think I knew that Claude needed an adult presence. Um, Claude is essentially a five or six year old child, so he goes into this world really enthusiastically. But I didn't want him to go on his own. Uh, I didn't want his, his sidekick to be a person or another animal, I thought that would distract too much. So I decided that his best friend is a sock, um, and they, they do go on adventures together.